Welcome to the Q Sports International Expo Gentlemen, being hosted at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino. This is the only WPA sanctioned world championship to take place in America. The 64 player field is based on invites and WPA rankings. This is the $100,000 added Predator World 10 Ball Championship presented by Q Sports International. Sponsored by Predator. This will be a race to eight double elimination in the first stage and a race to 10 for the final 16 players in the second stage. This will be alternating breaks. We have Jeremy Jones in the booth and myself, George Teichad, to bring you the live action. Yeah, George, it should be another great match here. Another final, huh? Almost. Well, yeah, it definitely could be. It's first round, folks. Meek Eminem. Former world nine ball champion, two time US Open nine ball champion, Hall of Famer, playing Robocop, Dennis Apulo. Now, Dennis played on this table a couple times in the uh, Vegas Diamond nine, uh, Vegas Diamond ten ball. I wonder if he really paid attention or saw much of the last match and how the table's breaking from the center. Mm -hmm. Nice break off there, but that was from the side rail. And, we kind of talked about it during the first tournament that a lot of the guys will do that when they're not sure of how the balls are breaking. But I'll tell you, Drew, if he lands on the rail here, this could get a little funny, getting away from the six maybe a little bit. Should be okay though. He's got that little angle to help it. He's got a tough nine ball. He's near the side pocket on the rail, so he's got to work accurately from the eight to the nine. One thing we've seen today tells me, oh, is this going to get on top of it? Just kind of let it go somewhere there. And I'm wondering where it's going to end up. Nothing easy now. And that was just kind of a loose play with the cue ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed is the 10 isn't moving around much mm -hmm. on the break. So, so that tells me that maybe the rack has gotten a little more consistent. And that's why we're seeing what we're used to seeing on those ten ball breaks, those balls on the sides, the four railers in the corner, the corner balls. So, well, they are on the thirty-second time uh, time clock. They do have the thirty-second extension. Uh, they have sixty seconds after the break, and Dennis has a little toughy of a nine ball here. Yeah, I think he got more out of the cue ball there than he expected. Shot the eight. Oh boy. Okay. A little, oh. little delay drop on the nine there. A little drama drop. And exactly what the doctor ordered. Keep in mind this is alternate break. There's no early 10 balls, no golden breaks. And if you're not familiar with 10 ball, the ball should be played in rotation and pocket called. Only one ball may be called at a time. The equipment is nine foot diamond tables, Predator Arcadia Reserve cloth. The bed cloth is brand new. They did them, they redid them last night. Uh, arena lights, the Predator arena lights, the Arcos balls, the new Predator triangle rack that John Lehman is racking with at this very moment. There's Dennis sitting in this chair, just uh, kind of happy with his performance and getting through that first rack. Played well in the Vegas Diamond. I thought I think he made the final 32, but then lost early in it. Now he's breaking more in the center of the table, like you'll see most guys in the 10 ball. Don't see anything down yet. Six balls threatening. They got down with reason away, though, so. You can see by his body language, he's not happy with that break. He may roll out just a few inches from where it's at now to a jump shot behind over the three ball here. Otherwise, besides, the two's very open, so very hard to roll out, even to an extremely tough shot on the one. Now, Mika, who's a pretty advanced uh, player, of course, and his offensive skills are through the roof. We'll see how he chooses to roll out here. He'll roll out down there by the four for a kick shot. 
Don't let. Don't think he's gonna let him see a piece of this, though. I would. Can't think it's pretty precise. Four gonna get in the way. Yeah, that was pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. he used the four to, to gain position there behind the seven. I was thinking, you know, most players will just tend to roll the ball without making contact, and you have to be so precise with that. He, um, he used the four well. I let him shoot. Now, I think this is a pretty thin hit on the one uh, to try and separate the balls. So, and the one's a good diamond away from that side rail. So, good chance the cue ball has a lot of speed on it, unless he hits a dead pull like that. So, a good pass there from Dennis. Or at least hindsight tells us it was a good pass. Okay, pretty natural here. Don't think he contacts the eight if he pockets the one, unless he hits a slow with a ton of right English. But just a tad of right English right here, and a little more speed, I think he's okay. Two doesn't pass the ten. Thank you, please. I thought he could come maybe two rails out, though. Yeah, two rails between the two and the three to shoot in the left-hand corner. Yeah, he's got to hit it well, though. He could catch a piece of the three. One good thing is I think he may get thin on the two, but I think if he pockets this one, he gets a little shot. Oh, you got a kiss off the eight. Sorry. Get that thin like I talked about. We'll see if he takes the eight on. Got a long rail bank he could play. I think he shoots the combo. It's a little bit of a two-way shot with the nine ball there, isn't it, Jeremy? The, the one rail bank. A little bit. A little bit. Yeah, he overcut it. Wow, that was surprising. Well, I think he gets to come back at the table. Should just bring the cue ball behind the, what is that, the eight that's near? Or is he rolling forward on the ten? Looks like he's rolling forward on the ten. Yeah, it doesn't look like he has much choice to Dennis left him on the rail. That's going to leak out for a shot. Well, no, at least the, we have a much more of a shot than, than Mika intended. He wanted to be mm -hmm. on the back of that 10, really cutting off this easy kick shot. So Mika would tell you that was a bit of a mistake, even though he's got his oppo opponent going to the rail first. I keep going one rail instead of two. And he's going to need some luck here. Got a little portion of it, but I think Mika can go rail first on the two here. He's got to travel some ways though, because it doesn't appear the three passes the five, George. But rail first goes around the seven, doesn't it? It, it, it rail first goes around. No, it goes up between the four and the seven. Yeah, I don't think so. Unless, if to make the ball, he's got to hit it so thin. No, nah, he'll th he'll throw it. He'll more. throw it in. Yeah, okay. he'll throw it. He should come below the seven and then. Kind of three rails on top of the three is what I see happening. Oh, wow. He didn't even make it. Yeah, no, it was real. He had to really get it thin. He came out okay, though. Really okay. Shot here, he's gonna have to kick behind the 10 and back up into the two ball. And that to catch a pretty full. That was a pretty good hit, considering. Yeah, look at this nine ball. Yeah, the two's coming. Well, I think it just leaked out, but he has to soft spin it to make it. I don't think he can get position. It's real close. I mean, mm. if he tries to go hard at this, not only is the two missable, but I think he could foul. Well, if anybody can make this shot, Mika can and did. You can make it with inside, so three, five, maybe the three goes, maybe the three off the eight. Uh, personally, I think I would shoot the three, five before I shot the three off the eight. Yeah, it doesn't look that tough. The three could get on top of the eight, though. That's true. In a slide. Really use the new belt in the pocket there. They 
give us new toys to play with. And not quite working yet. For those of you following along on CTS On Demand, the brackets and the live scoring, we have them both up and running. First set, but it's the only set. <laughs> Keep in mind, it's a race day. Last last week, you folks uh, you've been following along with us. Uh, we're watching the Diamond Las Vegas Open, which was two sets to four. Squeak that one. Out. Probably moves to the side here. That's the shot I like myself. You just let it go a little bit heavy, and he's going to hate it. And I don't know. I'm I'm, a, I'm sure these players are aware of the table being refelted, but they're just not a. Well, they both hit uh, quite a quite a couple a couple of racks at least uh, to warm up. So. They should have made themselves aware. He's going to hit this pretty nasty get behind the tent. You know, Dennis loves getting just some opportunity. Doesn't hesitate. Comes, comes to the table with his jump cue in hand. Can this scratch? Uh, yeah, definitely can. Because he usually has to come down on the ball, so. Not a big jump though, so he should be able to shove it forward mm -hmm. to the rail. He's elevating quite high actually for for what is the tens quite a ways away. Yeah, I was yeah. wondering about that. That looked like way too much well, elevation for that there. shot. The ten was some you know 15 inches away from the cue ball. Normally you don't need much when the ball's that far away. Surprising coming from Dennis. I don't see him jump the balls that often, but usually when he does, he's very successful. Mm -hmm. This is big for Mika to take the first game and tie it up one to one once he makes his 10. Back to the Predator World 10 ball with Dennis Arcolo to break the balls. Tied at one in a race to eight. 
versus Mika Imanu. Sticking to that side rail break and Campbell with a break and run. Well, he's dry here. Lambie's not going to like this. The one looks like he can bank it up past the five and just mildly come one rail with the cue ball behind the 210 and all that 3 6. A wall of balls. Yeah, he can definitely bank it by the two. So, I don't really see many other options to do. I mean, no, I like, I, I like that shot a lot. Even the five comes into play. There's four balls that can block this. Uh, uh, one ball, if he gets a pass, especially if he gets a pass to five. You definitely get plenty of the one. And you get tons of the one ball right there. I'm not saying that was a bad play by any means. But normally when you, you shoot ball first, you're going to be more accurate. But one ball. Tony Steph Dennis, a makeable uh, rail first shot with a little bit of a bend maybe. Take long distance on the two. He can even get by the nine. Yeah, the ball. Could yeah. overcut this. That's what I mean. Look at overcutting this. Mm -hmm. Go on the rail first and overcutting. Let the ball run around the nine. Maybe the one gets to the back rails. What you're thinking? That's what I was talking about. Today. He has mm -hmm. to take that long mm -hmm. shot on the two. Still a great shot on the one. Though. Yeah, those shots appear to be very easy, but they're they're real touchy. Heck yeah, they are. Yeah. That was up past the middle diamond. Mm -hmm. One thing about Dennis, though, is he makes a lot of those shots so very easy. Shot on the three in the corner, though. So rolling this and just flying with the six. Just make sure he pockets the ball. It's a comfortable shot. He hit it. And you can see the cue ball just rolling out a little more than uh, what we saw just a couple days ago with the new bed felt. Now he's got only 50 in it. And he's got to move the cue ball. They have the 10 of them. Hey, Ken. Would you please? He's going right through. And he got right around it. Again, kind of on top of it. Is he going to get by to get the side pocket? Not quite. So. Not quite. Similar to what happened to Mika. Mika. Yeah, yeah, the very last round. Right. can play the six to the side rail, in rail, maybe drop the cue ball behind the ten here and use the ten and the seven. Doesn't want to come up on the ten. That's dangerous. He'll just want to drop him on the in rail behind it. Wants the six to get away from the pocket, though, not to keep a jump. Well, he didn't get cover, but he did leave nine feet in between the two balls. Yeah, I'm wondering what uh, Smith is going to like to play here. It's a little too close to the rail for a kick shot. I think so. The angle's awful for it. He may just bump the six up the rail. Seeing as how the eight's on the side rail here. Like that, he's overhit it. Oh, no, he got him behind the nine. So wow, great shot. Wow, what a great shot. Six ball. Six ball. The players on the stream table are on the shot clock, a 30 second shot clock with a 30 second extension. All right, you'll want to hit center ball here. If he hits high, he's going to bend on him. Yeah, I can't, can't believe he hit high ball there. you got to hit center, especially on the new felt. It helps mm -hmm. it hold its line without the bend of the cue ball. Easy to make that mistake coming from the outer tables to 
the TV table or your pool room mm -hmm. table. Big opening for uh, Nika. As we saw in the first set when Skyler Woodward and Joshua Filler were playing, Skyler was leading and all of a sudden, the, uh, he was leading 2-0 and all of a sudden, uh, I'm sorry, 4 Was it 4-0? No, no, 4-0. 3-1, I believe. 3-1. And all of a sudden, a, a scratch on the break brought uh, Joshua Filler to close the score a little bit and threaten. Then Skyler was able to take control again. Yeah, a little light of his mark here, but shouldn't be a problem. Just got to pay attention. Well, the guys hate shooting the money ball from the rail, I'll tell you that. I know I do. How about you? Jeremy? Oh, yeah, for sure. Can't stand it. Got to break in this alternate format, leading two games to one over Dennis Urpolo. You can see seated in this chair on the right hand side of your upper screen. We are at the Q Sports International Expo comprised of the USA. Three balls, one on the four balls on the break. the cue ball and that's pretty unfortunate. Okay, Dennis has got a little congestion there with the six eight nine, but I think the six does pass the nine in that corner where the four's at. So it should be okay. He's just gonna draw clear of these balls to give him a nice angle to zigzag the cue ball two rails and back over for the five. Before. He might go three rails here. That 10 ball's a danger. He's going to be coming up off that second rail pretty fast. Yeah, I would go two rails back and forth mm -hmm. myself with low angles yeah, like just this. Like that. That's what you call. Yeah, that's the more accurate shot, to be honest with you. 
Now the table rolled out again. So I'm wondering if he's paying attention to that. There's been three or four shots. One of them cost him the last rack when he got on top of that ball. Go into the eight mildly here. I don't like him doing that. He doesn't like that, but maybe what, what's called for here. It's amazing on that new felt how you can hold those angles. Oh, and, and how, how nice the cue ball moves with just minimal English and effort. Well, Dennis is going to make quick work of this to tie things up at two. Meanwhile, we have other matches going at the same time. We've got a great one over on table two with Alex Kazakis and Thorsten Holman. And then we have Alex Pagaline and Marco Tucher. Uh, Al Al Shahamadi and Masako Yoshioka. Darren Appleton and David Alcadia Bermudez from Spain. Roland Garcia and Omar Al Shaheen, our winner, Omar Al Shaheen, who won the uh, Diamond Las Vegas Open just a couple days ago. I'm sorry, he was a finalist. He was a finalist. <laughs> Oops. Uh, he was in the final. Uh, Wu won it. John racking the ball too. There's some people thinking at home. Dude is crazy. <laughs> Is that John or yourself? Me. Oh. <laughs> Calling Omar the winner there. Came uh, close. That's the second winner. Yeah, the second that winner. Great. He did. Make a move at the 10 like a count to the side. Maybe he doesn't realize that. In this that's, that's right. Yeah. Just last week in the other tournament, the 10 ball would have counted on the break. For a golden break here, it does not. Neither do early ones. Tough rollout in the meantime at this level, of course. But some, you know, there's like, okay, it's an automatic rollout. The guy's probably going to take it. He probably hooks me, but it's not that bad. A lot of times when the ball's out in space, now he's got a little cover. He can go up table with the cue ball here. And no, he's not giving up an offensive shot. Going right at the five, it looks like. It's still not easy, though, because he knows the safety side of things. Uh, a lot of options there, maybe. Keep in mind, when you're rolling out like this, uh, you have to keep in mind that your opponent can always give it right back. So have a plan in case that happens. That with the 9 10 there, he'll definitely push the one, I believe, up table, dropping the cue ball a couple rails behind the 9 10. He could do it the other way, he could come off the top side of the one and go down behind the two, moving the one behind the three six and all that. But Try to nestle him in behind the nine. Nine times, what a nice safety. Yeah, and Mika had the jump cue in one hand and the pull cue in the other <laughs> prior to that shot. He can put that jump cue away. You know, in, in the back of your mind, when you shoot a shot like that, you look over at your opponent and you think, jump this. <laughs> Nothing to jump up against the ball. He's going to have to go. I think we can get by this. Oh, he's looking past the set. Attention, please. Thought he would go before and spin into the one. I kind of like what you're thinking. It's a more natural shot. Yeah, and you get a better feel for it, I think, mm -hmm. rather than trying to bend it backwards. You did a good job with it. Yeah. Ball's going to end up in the middle of the table. Like, no, it's not. No, it's going to give it up. No, he's giving up a shot, I think. No, he hasn't. Uh, I mean, oh, he no, can you see can a little see it, sliver yeah. of it, but, yeah. but not much. It's so thin, he may not even shoot directly at the one. I think he will. Bring the cue ball by the nine.
anytime they're kicking at him early, they always have a good chance to get the safety or cut him, at least slow him down a little bit. There's so many object balls on the table to, to really help you out when you're trying to kick out of something or jump out of something. So it's all right to kick this on the on the, uh, on that side. Yeah, he should it hit it. It looks good. Yeah, he should hit it for sure. Always want to bet on these guys to hit the ball. One does pass. Nice little straight. So getting on the two could be a little tricky unless he wants to maybe go rail first here to get the cue ball out a little bit. May do that. May just shoot off the rail here. I just like I like just making the ball and bring it back to the power where he just pointed with his cue just to the diamond so you can go off the rail for the two in the side and, and line up on the three. Not yeah, but you're going to be going away from it is a problem, and you got to get from the three to the five still. So he wants to get off the rail here with the cue ball. Thank you. And he doesn't have really a three rail angle off the two with the five being there also. So a lot of work. Like George said, if he just pinches this here, it probably just takes the shot. Try and squeeze the cue ball off the rail an inch, maybe. Oh, he did go the rail first. That's the shot I saw to help out the cue ball a little bit. And now he's much straighter on the two. He's still going away from it just a hair. It shouldn't be okay. Uh, should be okay. Oh yeah. In fact, uh, as I look look at this, he can. I was thinking he had to go to the right side of the three, but he can go to the left side of the three. Yeah, this is the proper oh, wow. side. Get you around the table much easier. does come for the side just make sure you're off the rail with the cue ball mm -hmm. that's the main thing here you get on the rail with the cue ball you could just have a little bit of problems holding for the nine I don't think that's the case here you just stop this cue ball now These guys make short work out of things like this, certain little layouts like this. Pull it.
get a break. Game number six. Trailing by a game, just to tie it up. They're on point as far as the break goes. Dennis began by winning the lag. Maybe ball's not going to slide in. I'm curious to see if Dennis gambles on what would be a kiss combination right here. Coming off the one, playing the six into the eight. Plus the one over the Oh, he played the combo. I mean, it didn't take much time. That's like a game-winning shot, most likely. There isn't a ball in the middle of the table. They're all on the sides. Uh, but I'm just wondering, he shot that quickly. I, I, I get it, a three-ball combo. Yeah. He had plenty of time on the clock. And like I said, at this level, it looked like probably a game-winning shot if he makes it. It wasn't that difficult. I didn't see him playing the combo, which I didn't mind the combo. My first look was the kiss shot off, coming off the, the one with the cue ball into the six, but mm -hmm. combo was fine also. Now this one's funny. I would set up just to draw straight off the four myself. I think anyways. I'm setting up the two rail angle. And to me, the four is a little off the rail a little much. Now this is very doable, don't get me wrong. But I thought he might just get heavy on the three, though, to you know draw up the four mm -hmm. just straight back to where he's at now, the way the ball is laid. But he's got to see, see the angles and move the ball so sweet. All right, now, if you ease this, I'd hate to make them both and get straight on the seven. Seven, it could have he, got tricky. He'd have a hard time getting on that nine ball from there, yeah. Well, the one thing about both these players is if something like that comes up, they scramble pretty well for position and for shots. Yeah, probably. The biggest difference, I think, from one level to another is that recovery, mm -hmm. being capable to recover. Now, if some of you are wondering what their Fargo scores are, Dennis is one of the highest in the world at 821. And uh, Ethan is 787. <laughs> 43 year old Hall of Famer, Nika Emin, just finished that rack to tie it up at three. Dennis will be breaking. As soon as John finishes up racking them up for him. Good look at Mika sitting down, focused on the table, clearing his mind. What do you feel like, Jeremy, when you're sitting in between racks like that? What's going through your mind? What goes through the mind of these top row players? Look at Dennis just well, waiting, fighting his time. Dennis, you know, both these guys definitely don't know for sure, but, you know, we all have our own little way of keeping keeping our focus. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I'm in the chair and my opponent's playing, I, I solely watch the cue ball usually. It's me real in tune with the table. Um, you know, maybe reflecting on a shot here or there that they feel good about, or how they hit a ball, you know, or there are swing thoughts that we go through, kind of like golf, they have a little swing thought prior to the stroke. Table's changed, and I think Dennis should probably change away from that side rail break. Mm -hmm. I think the table's broken nice from the center. And if he's hooked, he'll definitely take the jump to even though I think he can get out there. So from what you said, I, I think uh, what you said was basically stay positive in the chair? Yeah, stay, yeah definitely stay positive. And just like, like I said, what do you have to reflect on that's going to keep you positive? A lot of guys will sit there and beat themselves up over a shot and probably get negative and things. And that's why I asked the question. Yeah, well, that's human yeah. nature. You know, I mean, you're always going to recognize it's hill hill. People say, oh, you got to play it like it's not even hill hill. Well, I think you're silly to think that you, you can zone out hill hill or yeah. whatever the moment is. 
It's all about quieting that moment down a little bit. Uh, that, that makes much more sense yeah. than, than, than just try, trying to, uh, you know. Yeah, to say you're on an island out in the Pacific yeah. somewhere playing some nine balls. <laughs> Very hard to reckon, forget that you made mistakes or forget that you hit something great. Uh, all those all those cliches like that, they're true, but it's mainly to, mainly to get it uh you know, very limited on negative negativity, I guess. All right, I think he's good to just pinch this ball back. He's going to have to play a two rail angle here from the six to the seven, hitting right above the nine with the key ball. And in Mika's prime. I'm not sure there was ever anybody that was better on the slick table, even including Shane. Uh, you know, now Shane has more titles than mostly anybody that plays in the game today, but or anybody that's ever played, except for a handful. But something about Mika, his technique and his, you know, the way he liked to kind of like take over matches and stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought the slick table really set up nice for him. World nine ball championship. It was amazing what he did right here in Carter. Well, I do recall um, having a conversation with another pro player who uh, really looked at Mika and said he was just outstanding in his prime. Yeah, you want back to back US Opens? Well, Mika is changing from the center to the side rail. Interesting. Balls really broke great in our first match between Sky Woodward and Joshua Spiller. They broke pretty well to start this match. It's going to get a little bit of fortune not making a long break, but not making him as much of a shot at all. Like he's going right to the jump view, which is amazing. I thought he would consider a push out. Now he's looking to see if he makes the one. Does he have that cut on the two in the corner? I think so.
Jeremy and I were having a little discussion regarding uh, Mika Eminem. His age, I think I might have said he spoke and said he was 43, but he is 48 years old. Well, that was very surprising. Dennis, one of the best rollout players, don't get me wrong. You can be as great a rollout player as you, as you want to be, but at this level, if you have to roll out, you're going to take the worst of it. These guys are also you know, great players and make great decisions. But, question about that one right after the break just going for the jump cue especially because no cupcake on the two if he makes it you know normally if you're going to take on a shot like that there's a big reward there like you almost know mm -hmm. you're running out from there what well, part of the reason you take the shot on is because you want that hero shot to uh, develop into a rack Doesn't want to move the ball, that's fine. That's what I was going to say right there. Don't be afraid to just hold right there. Good, smart decision. Now he can draw the cue ball. It looks like the top rail's offered to. He wanted to follow his ball. Come back to the line between the six and the cue ball for the seven. Or will he stay underneath it and then come up? No, I think he'll come above. Slowly. You know, he doesn't want to get extremely above it. Oh, no, he stayed in between. That's fine. Because if, if he had plenty of room, this gets to the eight ball a lot easier than yeah. it would if he came up. For sure. I thought he maybe had too much angle on the six to do that so easily. To go a bit. Well, now he's going to have to work for position. Well, just kind of come just a little inside and hold to the left. Yeah, the position is not the problem. Just now he's a much more missable ball. That's all mm -hmm. because he needs to put a touch of inside English. I'm not saying it's real missable for these guys, but a little bit. And you notice how much he had to float it as well. Now it's tough, tough by, the, by the inch every time it rolls over. One of the things about playing position is don't leave the cue ball on the rail for yourself, just for your opponent. Well, it's amazing how much you can recover from little things when you're off the rail. But when you're on the rail, you can be almost ideal. And if you're off just a little bit, it's very difficult. He's been able to convert two games and now takes a five to three lead over Dennis Sarcolo. They're all big, but none bigger than this break off for Dennis here in game number nine. He's got to have this. He's got to put a stop to the bleeding because this is three games in a row for Mika. Is uh, on the side right now. I was about to read him off. There we go. Kazaki's trails Homan, four to one. Peg Lion over Tucher, four to three. Alkady trails Appleton, three to two. And Dennis to break the balls. Side rail break again, Jeremy. Yeah, he switched sides though. He made the one. I think the rack opened much more. Love this unless the three really hampers him with the cue ball. <laughs> it oh my. rolled right on top of it. Oh my, and the, and the angle's not that great to move the cue ball forward off the two either. So you saw him just a little hand gesture, at least the people in the room did. Now, can he ticky off the two and put him behind the 10? Or can he go offensive at all here? I mean, the four is a big ball. Wow. The three doesn't pass the eight, nine. He's going to be coming down on the ball. Well, does he have a little side of it that he can use that he doesn't have to come yeah, down on the ball? Yeah, maybe a hair, but I don't yeah, think that really improves anything. So. so, which is going to put like a little bit of it's going to go to the right, and there's a pocket yeah. down there. Yeah. I don't know what he does here. Can he bank the two back at the six and I, bring the cue ball behind the four? I like that. I like trying to do that. I don't know. If he's got the angle. Maybe the. the 
come off the deuce and put the cue ball behind the tent. Well, that's the first shot I saw, just, but that's just nicking it, though. Mm -hmm. That's just Being nicking the two ball, which is what he looked at a second ago. He's trying to make it now. Yeah, I don't think he's going to get position, though. Yeah, I see. He's going to have a tough shot back on the tree. I'm not saying he won't take it on, but super tough. Jump. Nice shot. Comes over to the five. That's a nice line for the six. Yeah, pretty straight here, so just got to go through the five a bit. Maybe a foot, foot and a half. Same uh, pocket. Yeah, I would worry it's about that on the slick table. You might catch a nine. This is the shot I like better. Just, just punching this thing clear. Mm -hmm. Just the table slick. You know, it won't grab that second rail, that left spin as much as you think, George. I so like coming back. Yeah, you can catch a nine. I like that. Dennis working to get close that score down a little bit, but his opponent's going to be breaking. Yeah, but all you can do is keep the pressure on. That's all you can do. Real close. He's got a little sliver of the one. I'm not sure he can pocket it. Maybe. Yeah, he can. He's looking at the one, too. 
And Dennis really taken no time after the break here where you have the most amount of time to take. Yeah, he's got 60 seconds after the break. Otherwise, it's a 30 second shot clock. And these are the biggest shots at this level is the shot after the break. First shot. There's a containing shot, offensive shot. So basically, that's when you make your decision how you're going to play this game. Yeah, you know, you exactly make it. Exactly what you, you know, just said. Yeah. You, you know, everybody says you plan out the whole rack. That's a farce. The pros don't do that. You know, that if you get that involved, you're going to look beyond the task at hand. You know, you look for problems, of course, and concerns and why you have to do something. But the people that get involved with the whole rack, to me, tend to really hate it when they get out of line a little bit mm. and uh, it affects their game. So I totally agree. You, know, you got to play with a little flow in there as well. Now, this is funny. You got to get an angle on the floor, but. And what does he do? Go between the 710 here, two rails, George? He could maybe just stay underneath the 10 and just oh, wow, stay on really? a straight line. Stay on a straight line. You went above the 7, okay. Wow, but this is the problem with me going above it, getting it in mm -hmm. and elevated over the 8. Even hard to hold for the short side on the 5 here. He's really made a boo boo out of this. Uh, this is got to super, you know, really ease this in. Well, that's, that's kind of when, when you asked me, you know, I said maybe stay below the 10 is because you might have a little bit longer shot, but with that ball on the rail, it's easy, it plays easier. So the length the distance doesn't hurt you as much. I may not go forward here. I may just stun across. I mean, the six goes easily. You need an angle to get on the seven anyway. Plus there's no danger. You go forward, you got to be careful with the cue ball not to get behind the 10 and the seven. He's addressed it with English. And I'm not sure. And he nine. tied up the nine. Yeah. The seven's there to open the nine when he shoots it, though, so it should be no problem. But still on the rail and straight here on the six. I'm not so sure this is anything easy. <laughs> to get back on the yeah. seven. Yeah. Yeah. He would have an wanted to shoot the seven off the nine to open the pocket up. But he actually got perfect here to where he can hold the eight and drop down for that little bitty tight this window. Is a tight window, is it? Okay. I thought maybe he, a good angle on the eight would, would bring him to the nine ten and maybe open it up and come underneath him. No, nah, I think he can get there. He, he may end up having to go short side on the ten. We'll see. I don't think he has to go. Well, he's at the table and he's going to look at it. In doing so, he used up his extension. Requires a depth touch here. Good, I think. And this is what I meant. He may have to play short side on the 10. I'll bring the cue ball backwards here and make a nine without bumping the ten. I think he has to just go by lightly. Now. The shot gets a little wild. I want to no, call it it's top okay. Not scratching ever. And a couple more, more matches that we have going. We have Roland Garcia and Omar Al Shaheen at four to three. Al Shaheen leading. Johan Chua and Danny Olsen are tied at five. And a great match going on right now between two youngsters, Chris Reinhold and Wiktor Zelinski in Poland. Zelinski uh, leads six to four in the race to eight. Chris Reinhold, a Moscone Cup hopeful. Zelinski oh. might be the same. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably He's probably 20 years old, yeah. Down there on the rankings a little bit, but a guy that's uh, improving steadily. Al Shamari and Masato Yoshioka. Al Shamari leads 3 to 1. And Dennis to break here. Tied up at 5. Made a ball. A lot of collisions on that. 
right side rail there. He's got a pocket for the one in the upper top right part of your screen. It does not pass the seven. I'm not sure he'll take this one on or not. You could overcut the one to the rail and then drop it behind the four and run the cue ball a couple rails behind the three eight. It's not a terrible shot. I like to stay offensive here, but it's thin cut on the one. Well, it's thin and no guarantee for the shape on the two. The three is very difficult. So I like hitting the left side of the one here and running the cue ball, like I said, two rails behind the eight. But he's going to go another route. Well, he may be trying to make this. That's going to get it there. And I'm surprised at that effort. I mean, it was lock him up if he gets him on the back of the seven, but very dangerous shot, though. Yeah, it Looks like he can come down for the, he can, he can get down here for this two ball on the left side with just a little stun. Yeah. Slide off that rail and get down by the side pocket. Yeah, and, you know, the safety thing side of things, it's hard to get ball in hand against these guys. So you don't you don't put a, as much risk reward at this level in the safeties as you would at some other levels, lower levels, because they tend to get ball in hand a little more often, right? Mm -hmm. So your safety, when you take a risk at a safety, it pays off a little bit. But here, that's why you see a lot of soft safeties, because you want to make sure you're not giving up an offensive shot. Where's he going with this? Um, Up behind it. Yeah. He, and that was all about the three ball, I think. He, had, he could have drawn down the rail to get to the two easily, but he wanted to get underneath the three to where he could really manufacture getting on the, uh, underneath the two to get, get on the three a little easier shot over the shot from now. Well, he's taking a long rail kick. And hit it very nice, but he's given up a shot to the side pocket. Yeah, and that's the type of thing that's upsetting when you make a, a, a bit of a foreign decision on the one there, getting on the two, and it doesn't work out. Give up an easy opportunity and possibly the lead here. So Dennis, you know, his knowledge of the game and hitting so many balls, I think it's the best of them sometimes, George. Like what he did right there, you see how he went and looked? Mm -hmm. He does that when he thinks it's needed. And when I see him play his best pulls, when he goes and does it almost every shot, just like uh, the rest gotcha. of the pros do. Well, you know? there, there is a shot clock, and he's maybe a little concerned about it, but he's played with it enough. Yeah, it doesn't require a ton of looking. Okay. You know, but just, you know, if you already know what you're going to do, you don't have to go look very long. Right, it just, just makes a you a little better at sure. the shot is sure. all, you know, so. And it keeps you in line throughout the rack a little better, George. You okay. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, definitely. That way, Thank some you. simple mistake doesn't happen. Love to just get the cut on the floor here, just past the side, or just near that left side pocket. Uh oh. Yeah. Wow. Meek is appreciative. He'll take this all day. Kind of a tell of two matches between this one and our last. The way the balls have broke overall and some mental errors here. And to me, that wasn't a physical error. That was a mental error. It looked like. This is a... Uh... I guess if you're going to have a kind of a simple rack, this one's it because he just gets on this eight ball, stops it for the eight, for the nine there in position, and the uh, two ball runs naturally towards the ten for a, an easy shot on the ten also. Well, me in the driver's seat now, only ahead by one team, but he does break in the next.
He's being in the ring. Hall of Famer to break. To try to get on the hill versus Dennis Arcolo. It looks like past the seventh of the corner pocket. Yeah. Uh, about the same for the other pocket, too, huh? I'm wondering if he takes on this 20 by the seven. It's pretty tight. To it is. And and look, yeah. I wonder if he just draws the cue ball straight on the line trying to come back to the three in the side by the six. I, I like that, especially because, it, uh, well, he's got to draw it, doesn't he? I was going to say he's got a nice line, but yeah. So, I mean, just draw as much as you can on that straight line and come back. I think that's a correct play. There was a lot of room. Sure. As long as you didn't really crush it or lose the cue ball on the side somehow, I thought it was going to be okay. The way these balls are laying, it could be a dangerous uh, rack for Dennis. A response. And I'm really shocked he's never gone to the center of the table on the break. But. You'll just ease this in. No reason to catch the second rail. No reason to draw it. Just roll your ball. Draw a little closer, or get a little, or get a little closer to the eight. But you can see with the nine over the other or other corner, really yeah. trying to get into the cue ball is the only way to make a big mistake. I like him moving it back a little bit right there. Now he can play a real natural couple rails at the nine. Oh, he drew. Just lined up pretty straight. This offers an easy angle to get around to the ten in the same pocket. One thing about draw, though, which is at this level is different, but we've seen it, is you rarely ever miss cue with top English. I'll tell you that. I know it's not something you should factor I, I, in. I, but I, yeah, there was a time when I was much younger that I used to love to draw that ball, but uh, not anymore. It's just, just like ball in hand. <clears throat> we talk about it. You know, not only are you going to play better position with a top English with ball in hand, but I've seen people set it up to draw and miscue the ball. And sure. They could have followed the ball in the position. Well, you know, when you're following the ball, it's much easier to fall on the ball when you're following oh, yeah. than it is to draw the ball in position. It's more control. Yeah, your touch and everything yeah. is much easier. I kind of equate it to like rolling a ball in front of you versus rolling a ball behind you or throwing it. Which okay. one you're going to be more accurate? You know? When you draw, the ball is coming back behind you wherever you're at. Some home and making a good run here on Kazakis looking to go up six to one. Maybe six to two now. I'm not sure if that was updated. I saw Kazakis win another game. Makes me feel like uh, six to five there. Or six to two, excuse me. Now Dennis is breaking and he needs this game. He can't afford to let his opponent take it because he'll go over to the one lost side. Ball down, which is first thing first, that's what you gotta have. Don't know if he's gonna get a shot. It's close. I think yeah, he's the second time he does this, isn't it? Well, this one here, shot. you know, but I, I just like to see him take more time doing it. You know what I mean? The last mm -hmm. one he got and shot that jump shot quickly, which I thought he had a better option than the jump myself, but he's got options to roll out here if he wants. The one doesn't pass the seven. You could roll out to a super tough shot. I think he's a favorite to make this. 
My yeah. fear is the cue ball may come down towards this five ball near that corner. That's what I kind of get the feeling of what might happen with this shot. He's trying not to draw it. He's trying to go towards the 10 with the cue ball. Yeah. You could see him cueing a little higher on the ball. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure he didn't draw it into that corner I was talking about. Right. He kind of lost his focus on the pocket in the ball. Now everything is completely out of his control and it's on Mika's lap. Yeah, well, Craig Dennis will be trying to control the next match on the one loss side. These look pretty good, George. Mm -hmm. Mika's played well. I think only one mistake the entire match besides the balls on the brink. I may have to play a 2 4 from where he got there. Because uh, if the 7 wasn't there, he might come two rails uh, out for the 2 in the same pocket. Now I kind of feel like he's, ooh, he's going to be some distance away from this now. This two ball could settle on a funny part on that rail after pocketing the four, sure, George. Sure, I, yeah, it's, it's lined up real nice, but that doesn't mean, uh, well, he's going to have to hit it. He's going to have to draw a little bit. Or stun it, whichever. And there. He's okay. Oh, he's okay. He's okay. I'm not sure what he thought about that with the draw and hitting it with that much speed. I kind of think he thought that was going to go past that side pocket for the, for the corner, corner a little that, bit. At that, that, that speed he hit it, right? It does yeah. make sense because of the speed he hit it, yeah. yeah. Do you bump the nine here? Uh, or go by the well, nine? Well, you're gambling if you're bumping okay, the he, nine. He, I didn't know he could go by it. That makes a huge difference and makes things much easier. Well, Dennis, who made it to the final 32 of the diamond undefeated is going to suffer an early loss it looks like and Eminem, who didn't make it to the final 32 of the diamond he made a run on that loser side he's going to get through this first match i think really got to have a major catastrophe from here i like just one row up you know, like that, holding that ankle on the seventh and mika who's been trying to get back you know, I don't know if he'll ever get to that prime he was in just because it was such a high level, but he's trying to get back into that, you know, being able to win them big tournaments kind of gear. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a good start for his second week here in Vegas in the Predator World 10 ball. We'll be back Take in it. Yeah. Come on, baby. Pacific time for another heck of a match. Of a fan base. Yeah. yeah. 